Unify Protect has made it really easy to view your cameras whether you're at home or on the go. As a matter of fact, I could even view them in my Tesla on the main screen when I was away from my house, which I thought was pretty damn cool. So it got me thinking. I was like, I should show you guys different ways that you can view your cameras so you can kind of work that into your planning. And if you're building a house, we're gonna talk about a couple different solutions you can implement to build in kind of a cool way to display and interact with your camera systems so you can put cables where you need them. Let's get started. So in my time installing networks, I've seen quite a few camera NVR systems out there. And I'm not trying to diss those systems or you know say they suck. They're just, in my opinion, a little bit clunky though. Even ones that are installed by professional security companies, right? A lot of times you have a physical NVR box with the cameras pulled it to it, you know, so they're all plugged in the back of it. And then you get like a USB mouse and a monitor to set, and you gotta figure out how you're gonna make this thing look okay. And in a lot of the cases that I worked in, you know, the homeowner would actually stick it in some area of the house they don't see very often, like a storage room, or just, it's kind of just put it in the corner and so I don't have to deal with it or look at it, right? And then on top of that, if you wanted to view your cameras from outside the house, which is everybody, you had to set up port forwarding rules, make sure you didn't have double NAT situations, or use a service like DDNS in case your IP address changes. I mean, it was just, again, kind of clunky, not a great way of doing it. Um, and I think it forced a lot of people to kind of say, I don't want to do that. Uh, and I don't want to spend the money on that for one thing. So they would kind of move over into the IOT camera system like Ring or Nest or one of those. And, and they're fine. They serve a purpose, but there's definite drawbacks to them too. A lot of them have battery only cameras and you're dealing with battery swap outs. Um, you have to pay to access your NVR. So, you know, in many cases, you know, it costs money every year to be able to use the system. Um, and they're just kind of cheaply made in all honesty. So, but you could view them wherever you're at. That part was really, really easy. So this is one of those areas where I just really think the Unified Protect camera system really stands out. I mean, you don't have to deal with any of the stuff really that I was just talking about. There's no clunky monitor sitting on top of an NVR box shoved in the corner of the house. Matter of fact, with the Ubiquiti system, sometimes your router is your NVR, which is really, really nice. Um, but even if you have a standalone NVR system, you don't have to go to it to access it. Once it's online and you have all your cameras adopted and you're good to go, your system's online, anywhere you have internet connection, you can access this, this thing, which is really cool. And we're gonna talk a little bit more about that later. But what I thought was really cool is you could even access it from your car. Now, I'm gonna go on a little tangent here. You guys can fast forward this. I know there's a lot of Tesla haters out there, but recently I bought one. So I've had one for about a month and a half or so. And I really like the car and it has an internet browser in it. So I was like, I wonder if I can access my cameras from this thing. So I was at work and I was like, I'm gonna try it. So I literally pull up the unify.ui.com just like as if I was on my computer and it brought up the page. I was able to log in, do the dual authentication, multi-factor, everything worked. And I was looking at my cameras. I could literally pull them up while I was sitting at work. I thought that was super, super cool. I could interact with them because it's a touch screen so I can make it full screen and scroll and just like I was using my phone. I mean, it was kind of cool. I mean, I even tested and don't do this at home, but I even tested while driving down the road. You don't get full screen because it forces you to, you know, be part of the screen, but it would let you use the internet browser while driving down the road, which I thought was kind of neat, I guess. And so I could access my cameras that way. And once I set a favorite, I mean, you can get to them very, very quickly. So anyway, didn't mean to tangent too much, but I thought that was really neat. So if there's any Tesla owners out there, you can actually access your Unified cameras from the car, which I thought was pretty cool. Okay, so with that, let's go ahead and get into today's video. Now, before we do that, I wanna make sure I highlight here that I'm not here to bash on any of these other camera systems out there, even though I know how it sounds the way I started. But I am basing that off of my own personal experience. I don't install them every day. I don't even run in that world as often as I used to. So they've probably gotten a lot better. So before you blow me up in the comments too bad, just understand that I'm basing this off of what I've experienced in the field. And I've set up a lot of firewall rules to allow these systems to work properly, uh, only to have to redo it down the road once a public IP address changed or something like that. So again, 
not trying to bash these other systems, just stuff I've seen. Now, when I put Ubiquiti in my house for my camera system, I was pleasantly surprised that you don't have to do any of that. And so today's video, we're just gonna be highlighting that. So if you're doing research on your camera system, you kind of know one of the benefits of owning one. And I think that's very, very important. Being able to see your cameras when you're away is kind of the whole point. And so by making that easy to do, I think it really is a good benefit to something like a Ubiquiti system. Now, you don't have to do any of the stuff I've outlined earlier. There's no firewall rules. There's no port forwarding. None of that stuff has to happen, which is great. And I'll give you an example of this. In my house, I actually have triple NAT. Now, what that really means is, is that my router that my cameras are on is behind another router, which is actually behind another router before it gets to the internet. We call that triple NAT. It's actually bouncing between multiple routers. So if I was to have to do port forwarding to access these cameras, I would have to do it in multiple places before it would work, right? Every time I hit a router, I hit a firewall and I gotta make rules. Then I hit another firewall and I gotta make rules. You don't have to do any of that with Ubiquiti and it makes their system extremely accessible. Now you got basically two options. One is the app and the second is a browser. All right, so first let's talk about the Unify Protect app. Now, one thing I really like that Ubiquiti did is that they made the network app separate from the camera app. Um, so there is a separate app called Unify Protect that you would use to be able to access your cameras. And inside the app, you can not only view your cameras, but you can make all your configuration changes, you can name things, uh, you can look at uh, motion events that happen, get notifications, and on the subject of notifications, sorry, quick tangent here, but I think this is gonna um, require its own video, but I am going to make a video about unified notifications, both on the network side and the camera side. I think it's an area that people want to work a certain way and you can be overwhelmed or even underwhelmed by notifications. Just know that notifications are part of this and you can set them up. So if someone rings your doorbell, you can make it so your phone rings and things happen, which is great. And that's all done and works in the Unify Protect app. Okay, back to the video. So um, one really cool thing that they've done with Unify Protect, and again, viewing things on the go, which is really neat. If you have multiple properties or you have Unify cameras maybe at your parents' house or a sibling's house or a relative, whatever, they have a new system out called Vantage Point where you can actually tie multiple systems together into one view. So you can see your parents' house, your house, and your uncle's house all in one kind of united view. And I think that's really, really great. It also kind of makes you want to put Ubiquity in different places so you can get that, that benefit. So they do a good job with that and they're always constantly working on things. But the app is very, very powerful. You can interact with it, you can zoom in with it, you can even save clips Maybe something happens while you're away, but you can save those clips to your phone so you always have them, which is also really, really nice. Now, the next way to view your cameras when you're on the go is with a browser. And I alluded to this a little bit ago with my Tesla story, so I won't spend a ton of time on this, but the one thing I did wanna call out as it pertains to the browser is that you get the same experience inside your home as you do when you're away. So you're not getting like a limited view or something when you do that. It is the exact same experience. And it's extremely easy. It's not picky. It doesn't really care what browser you're using. There's no special add-ins or codecs or anything that you have to worry about to make the system work. And I ran into that a lot of times in my previous experience where when a consumer or a customer had one of the view their cameras when they're away, they were kind of forced to use their phone, which again, we use our phone for everything. So it's not that big a deal um, in a lot of cases, but they were forced to because the camera systems they had themselves either required a special kind of browser or add-in or you had to use Internet Explorer just because they were kind of outdated. I don't know, there was just limitations. The thing I like about Ubiquiti and its accessibility is there really isn't a bunch of limitations. Um, you can kind of use any browser you want and as long as your work isn't blocking the URL that you need to access, you should be able to access them from just about anywhere you have an internet connection, which is great. And that vantage point of thing I was just talking about where you can see multiple systems also works in the browser. Actually, it's a really great experience in the browser, works really well. I am gonna do a video on that 
just so you guys know, so you guys can see it. I just need to talk with a couple people uh, and make sure I have their permission to, to do that. But um, there will be a video on that coming in the future. It's a neat feature. I think it's really great. All right, guys. So now let's talk about some of the cool stuff because we all want to be able to see our cameras when we're on the go. That's a no-brainer. But what about those of us who want to interact with those cameras while we're at the house or maybe incorporate some kind of home assistant, automations, or being able to see your cameras on any TV you want or even view it on a touch panel that's built into the wall. Guys, Ubiquiti has made that very, very easy. But before I get into it, unfortunately, I got to go pick on our old style MVR one more time. Now, with the old style MVR, again, physical box sitting somewhere in your house has an HDMI port on the back. And whatever you plug that HDMI port into, a TV in another room, whatever, if you're able to run a long cable, you can view those cameras over there. However, if you want to make setting changes, the mouse is physically connected to the box. So that typically means you need a monitor at the device as well as a TV and you'd have to kind of flip cables back and forth um, when you're done making your settings. Mm, yeah, doable, but kind of a pain. The other thing is, is there's only one port on the back. So if you want to run this to multiple TVs in your house, you would need to run it into some kind of HDMI splitter and then run HDMI cables to those TVs. Again, doable, but you know, kind of clunky and adds extra costs and then maybe you can't run HDMI everywhere. You know, everybody's situation is a little bit different, right? But you did have a third option. If you had ethernet in your house, you can convert ethernet to HDMI and it's actually really easy and affordable to do. You buy these little converter boxes, one goes on each end of the, of the ethernet cable and allows you to plug in an, uh, an HDMI into one end, converts it to ethernet and then it converts it back to HDMI at the TV. Cool, right? But there is a downside and the downside is you actually lose the ability to use that ethernet cable for anything else. You, it's, it's gonna be used as a converter cable and that's it. You can't run the PlayStation or plug it into a TV as well as convert it. So it forces you, the homeowner, to either run extra cables to your TV because you know you're gonna convert these, or be able to convert ethernet to HDMI, or maybe sacrifice that ethernet cable to use in that case and have to use Wi-Fi um, at the TV level, which again, maybe that's not a big deal to you and that's okay. I'm just letting you know some of the downsides of doing that. And those converter kits also need power on both ends. So if you ever have a power outage or you gotta put extra power outlets behind your TV to be able to accommodate, it gets a little messy with wires. It can be a little bit challenging, but again, it does work in that scenario. Now I'm happy to sit, report that you don't have to do any of that when it comes to Unify Protect system. And that's what I wanna talk about next. So the first little guy I wanna talk about here is the Unify Viewport. Now this device right here at $199 allows you to view your cameras on whatever TV you want. Now you would need one of these for each TV that you wanna see your camera. So understand that there is a little bit of cost involved, but it's gonna solve a lot of the problems I was kinda of outlining earlier with the old system, right? So basically the way it works is, is there's a port on the top that allows you to plug in an ethernet cable, okay, into it. And via PoE, this will power on. So it gets its power from your network switch. So you do need a PoE switch, which I know a lot of you do because you have access points. So you're gonna power this with PoE and it'll come on. And then you'll actually adopt it into your camera system just like a camera or whatever. It kind of becomes part of the system. You can name it living room TV, office TV, whatever, okay? Then on the bottom of it, there's an HDMI port and you can plug an HDMI cable from this device to your TV to be able to view those cameras. And it works really, really well. There's even a nice little mount that you can mount it to the back of your TV. And it just makes a nice little clean solution, fits behind most TVs, no special power cords needed or anything. It pulls its power from the switch. However, it also has one more little trick up its sleeve and that is with this secondary ethernet cable. If you only have a single ethernet port behind your TVs, you can use that to power this device and still be able to connect your TV, your Roku, whatever you had before using that single cable. You don't lose your cable like you did in the other scenario. 
and it makes it really, really handy. Now, like I said, you would need one of these for each TV, so obviously there's some cost there, um, but I think it's cleaner, easier, and if you only have a single cable, it solves that as well. All right, so the next device I want to show you guys that's really, really kind of cool, especially those of you who want to build a house and want to have a little bit more of an interaction with it, not just view your Unify cameras, is the Unify Connect display. Now, I have to show you this on the screen here because I don't have one of these um, to be able to show you in person, but I think it's a really cool device and I think it's worth bringing up. And where this is really going to come into play is for those of you who like some kind of a built-in touchscreen and would normally use an iPad or an Android tablet of some kind. Now, at $699, it is a little pricey, but it is fully touchscreen. I think you can use other apps on it as well, so it's not like you have to use it just for this. It can do other things. Um, but I thought it was really, really nice, and I'm actually going to link a couple links in the video in the description down where people have installed these and used them so you guys can see a little bit more about what it's like. Now, probably the drawback of this, as well as its benefit, is the fact that it's PoE powered. However, it requires PoE plus plus power, which means your switch has to be capable of doing that, or you would have to use some kind of a power injector that has PoE plus plus power. Okay, it is not going to uh, be able to be powered off a lot of switches out there. Okay, so you're talking like the Pro Max switches and some of the professional series switches that have some PoE plus plus ports. So it does require a little bit of juice. However, you have a couple different displaying options. There's a display arm that allows you to kind of mount it on a desk or a tabletop somewhere. Um, or you actually have this built-in um, flush mount for the wall, um, which is actually kind of cool, right? So it allows you to kind of build this thing into the wall. Plus, at 21 and a half inches, this thing is going to be bigger than a tablet or whatever. I know some of the ch challenges that people run into when they do flush mount a tablet is how to power the device. A lot of times it requires running a power, you know, the power cable down through the wall and plugging it, popping it back through and plugging it into an outlet or, or wiring the box a certain way to be able to put the power behind it. It's just some things you need to think of. I do think using an Ethernet PoE++ like device does make this simpler. And with it being touchscreen, you can interact with your cameras. One of the videos I'll show you down below and give the guy some love. He actually hooked one of these up Worked really, really great. He says some nice things about it. It was one of the videos I did in my research, and he uses it in a baby monitor situation. So he can be in his office, and he puts a Unify camera in his baby, uh, where his baby crib is, because again, they have two-way talk, and you can hear sounds and know when the baby's crying. And then he can just pull that up in his office and be able to interact with it or zoom in or whatever he wants to do while the baby's sleeping, which is really, really nice. And so I thought that was a really nice use case for it. Like I said, I'll link some um, videos down below in the description that I looked at, but kind of a cool little device. I think it's, I think it's pretty neat. Um, again, some costs involved. Ubiquity stuff is not cheap. We've kind of talked about that, but when you, when you look at the other scenarios, I mean, an iPad isn't cheap either. And I know you can buy tablets for 200 bucks, but then how long are they going to last? I think this would is kind of built to last um, for a while, and it just you know, kind of gives some nice options here. So I wanted to float it out to you, especially you guys who are building a home and want to incorporate some displays throughout the home to be able to interact with your cameras. I think this would be a decent device to do that. Now, real quick, before I sign off on here, I just wanted to take a moment and say thank you to every one of you out there who support me here on the Ethernet Blueprint channel. Um, guys, recently we, we hit the 10,000 subscriber mark. This is not lost on me. I'm blown away by it. I'm constantly blown away by your comments. I have the nicest viewers on YouTube. That's, that's kudos to you because people can write anything on the internet and you guys still choose to leave nice constructive comments. Um, there's things I miss, there's things I mess up, but you guys are right there to support me and I really appreciate it. I hope that you get as much value from this channel as I get from learning from you guys. I just wanted to say thanks because I really, really appreciate it. And with that, we'll go ahead and sign off on this video. We'll see you down the road in the next one.